I don't I, I don't want to be accused of being like bougie over this or whatever, because I think this is actually more of a proletarian attitude, I guess. You can research a lot of stuff online, but a lot of the research you do is total f bullshit. When you order stuff off Amazon, a lot of the stuff that gets shipped to you is literally like not the thing you ordered. Um, and that's because Amazon like relies on businesses fronting products that is so decentralized and so complicated that like very often you will order a thing and they'll just be lying about what it is and it'll be something else. They'll give you specs that aren't wrong. You'll get details on like construction processes that, that aren't correct. And like the result of this, I feel, is that unless this is one of the reasons why people really, really like Ikea because Ikea is one of the few places that you can still go where you can build a cohesive living space in your house uh, in, 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 for a low price, affordably, you know, like, because a lot of uh, furniture stores are really expensive. You can go there and everything there is what it is there. You have kind of like this cohesive brand, you know, and, and a lot of Ikea shit is really low quality, sure, but there is cohesion. The cohesion is real. But I feel like um, a lot of, uh, like very often these days, I feel like people populate their houses with cheap crap that they feel no attachment to. It doesn't work the way they want it to, and they're always wondering, like, eh, should I just toss this and get a better one, or should I just live with this one, you know? Because nothing is ever what they think it will be, or expect it to be, or whatever. Like, nothing lasts long, nothing works the way it should. And a lot of that, honestly, is because of uh, online retail. Detail. A lot of that is because it is so, so easy to, um, to bullshit customers when everything is sort of like thrown into the gigantic like mix and match like gamble thon that is, uh, you know, Amazon fulfillment or whatever. And as a consequence of that, I think a lot of people just don't really care about the things they own. And I think that encourages them to consume more. And I think that is a bad for our mental health because we should feel that there is meaning in the things we own. We should find them beautiful or useful or we should appreciate them. That's good. And at the same time, it, we, because we then consume more, like we contribute more to a bunch of like associated economic issues, you know? I only ever buy high user rated items. Well, yeah, you can. And sometimes you'll just get shipped a different thing. Uh, and sometimes the, the, the user reviews are lies, you know? Amazon does some, you know, there is some effort from Amazon to, um, you know, like crack down on the obvious fraud and dishonesty. But, you know, that, that, that doesn't fix everything. You know, the, the way it used to be for ages and the way I feel like it should be for a lot of stuff is you go to a place where you know they'll have a thing and then you get to talk to a guy whose job it is to be friendly to you and tell you about the thing. And then you make a decision about the thing. And that was how it was for all of human history, basically, basically since like the very beginning of anything even resembling commercialism until really recently like within my lifetime you know and i think that's pretty weird i don't know that that just that feels weird to me i'm not saying that like everything is better back to any of that bullshit this it's not fully a return point like there's still problems with like buying stuff in person but it, i feel like we're feeding into a really negative feedback loop right because like first of all to be clear okay the total absence of like brick and mortar store availability is a blight on the concept of human life in cities, you know? That like having every single commercial area be like an empty wasteland, either because it, it shut down or because no one's using it, is like, what do you, like, you can only, you you can only put so many restaurants there, okay? Like what else, you, you can't have half of a city be a park and Amazon warehouses and, and everyone just orders a lot. Like we, we go out to do and to look at things. There should be a communal element to everything, potentially, everything we do, everything we experience should be at least potentially communal like we can engage with other people we can have friends we can do things we can ask somebody about an item you know uh, but it's all gone now you know or at least it's dying it's going away oh yeah for sure dm it's 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 done deliberately in a lot of cases it's miserable i hope you're doing well too i'm wearing uncomfortable pants but i'm breaking them in you know i think there should be options i'm not arguing to ban online shopping like i said it's useful for a lot of stuff vosh what if we don't like people then do what people have done for all of human history okay go to a store and when people ask you if they can help you, say, oh, no, thanks, and then go do the thing. <laughs> or buy online, whatever. You're fine. You're fine. Also, learn to like people, okay? Well, you, you will all be dead one day, you know? Live a little. It's just, it, it, you, you just, does everyone agree? Does everyone agree that conceptually what I have described is a pretty good way of getting a thing? You want the thing, you go to the, the thing place, you talk to the guy who knows about the thing, and then you 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 purchase a thing. I feel like that's a solid. I feel I feel like that's a workable model. 
I like that. That makes sense to me. You know? There are things you can get online again. There's lots of stuff where the um, specifics or the quality of an item aren't, like, that crazy important, you know? It, just, like, little minor stuff. You know, whatever. I just, you get, like, oh, I ran out of this kind of bag. I don't, I don't know. You, you know, it's not a fully necessary thing. But it's... It's still good. Who will keep the postal workers employed? Uh, the postal workers don't deliver your Amazon packages. You know that, right? UPS does. Uh, as for who will keep UPS people employed, you know, honestly, I do think it's a little weird how many people in our country are employed in the trucking and delivery industry. I gotta say, I feel like that's a little bit odd. And as somebody who doesn't respect car culture, you know, I'd be okay with maybe a bit of a shift away from that, you know? Postal workers sometimes deliver those, do they? Oh, I, I never see that. But yeah, I guess it's... Um, it's a big operation. I'm sure they help. Bosch, not to come across as antagonistic, but how do poor people manage all of this? No, no, no. Nothing that I'm describing is worse for poor people than for rich people. What I'm describing is putting an end to the, the race to the bottom. Because this cycle is what caused the, the middle class in this country to die anyway, you know? Walmart opens up and prices all their shit sh super cheap, and everyone's like, woo, finally, options for poor people. But then they drive all the local stores out of business, um, they employ fewer people than the old stores did, they pay their employees less than the old stores did, and they drain all the wealth in that community out and into the, you know, offshore accounts of a couple of shareholders. Like, the, 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 the idea that, like, the online shopping boom where Amazon can deliver anything to you for $5... This is not good for poor people, <laughs> like not even a little bit. We're talking about an unprecedentedly large displacement of wealth and living space and job opportunities for the sake of what we call efficiency. But in reality, it's very inefficient in like a distributive sense. It's efficient only in this like top down, like uh, vertical integration accumulation of capital sense, like how much of the economy can be oriented around one single company. You know what I mean? But that doesn't like that. Like, look, you know, have prices for random bullshit. Has it not gone down significantly since Walmart became the big name that it is? I ask you, have people gotten wealthier? Like, have, have poor people, like, is, is the situation improved? Is it fixed? No, clearly not, because there's a consequence to all of that. More and more wealth gets skimmed off of the, uh, the, the margins, you know, and where, where does it go? Not to, not to, well, I say us, like, I'm middle class, you know, to, not to you, poors, thank you, but uh, uh, to the shareholders. How exactly is the online shopping different from the Sears catalog exactly? Enormously. The Sears catalog just showed you an inventory of items from a given company. Amazon is the entire economy now. From vertical integration to the way that Amazon does business with the companies that it buys stuff from to the competitive market pricing that it does within its own businesses that encourages them to drive down prices as much as possible to the dishonesty and the way stuff is packaged. Mar like, uh, on like every single level. It's very, very different. But this isn't a pro-Sears catalog argument. This is a pro so, you know, there are elements of, you know, a commercialization that should be kept local. And then they closed too. It's insane how many Walmarts have literally done that. Absorbed all the wealth and closed and said, go to the superstore three towns over in Cope. Yeah, literally. It's li they're like, it's like a fucking leech. They, you know, they open up a Walmart in a fucking Appalachian town or whatever. Schlorp. Uh, everything dies, and then they leave, and, and and a new one opens up, like, you know, a little fucking down the while, you know? Infinitely more satisfying to buy something from someone who knows what they're talking about, butcher at a local shop who actually knows about meat, local store that sells Japanese knives. I think part of it is that items are uh, deprived of their meaning, and if an item has no meaning to you, then fuck it, it's worthless. Like, it, 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 it this is a very modern problem, but like it's normal to like the things you own. I feel like it's insane to even say that, but like if you own something, I feel like it should mean something more to you than thinking like, wow, didn't think I could get something online for that cheap, you know? And and so much of it now is just like material, like just entirely a matter of utility and people feel no attachment to it, you know? It's just like this... Um, it's just a, a thing. And some of the, there are, there are a lot of ways that you can care about a thing that they can in, in, imbue your life with meaning or with, with beauty. Like you can derive something from it. Um, shallow and superficial people like things that are expensive. That's a way to do it. I don't think it's the best way. You can care about or like something a lot because you find it personally very beautiful and captivating in some like direct, like sensory way. Um, it can mean a lot to you because of the experience that you had when you got it. By the way, 
Online buying fucks that. Oh yeah, I, I have fond memories of these online orders that I made from the experience of getting them. Yeah, sure. Whereas there are plenty of things that I own that I got while shopping at markets with my friends or like, you know, like things that I got as a consequence of some day out. And I look at that and I think of the day out. It's really nice, you know? It's like a nice memory. Online shopping destroys that. that you literally like not even on the table. I, you know, it, it, can, it can be like an, an item that is just sort of like innately very impressive. Like there's something really captivating or engaging about the way it does its function, the purpose that it serves. Uh, but now that everyone buys like cheap crap because we're on a race to the bottom, you know, everyone just like over consumes on shit that they don't really like or care about. It's it's like people get um people get like new item uh, euphoria. This is this is what people talk about when they talk about like um, shopping therapy or retail therapy, right? Like you go out and you buy a bunch of shit. Every item you buy costs like ten dollars. You don't really like any of them, but you get a thrill from getting to wear them once before you toss them out. And by the way, that's not my conjecture. That's math. You want to take a look at how many clothes Americans toss out? Why? Oh, those clothes are, have been worn once or twice. What are you throwing them out for? Well, it's because nobody gives a fuck about them because they, they were bought in like this, oh, that would look nice, but the like no care, no thought, sleepwalking through life like zombies, you know? Like, I, I'm not even saying like, oh, everything has to be super high quality. Just you have to care about it, you know? But the way things are currently set up discourages you from caring about it because there is no reason to care about it you're not given anything the artifice of of of, of social engagement uh has, has broken entirely you know everything is also disposable or we can just get another one when it comes to items yeah i feel like it's really sad i feel like i don't know again this isn't a matter of like i think that you should love items or whatever it's more a matter of like i think that if you own something it would be nice if that thing gave you positive feelings but so much shit is disposable now that like the real virtue of a lot of items are the fact that you don't care about them they're disposable they're replaceable if they break it's not a huge deal and if that's that's the most you can say about the stuff that you own if that's the best thing you have to say about it i wouldn't care if it broke and that's the stuff that fills your house i don't know that's um that's really sad like i feel like it's not difficult to imagine a house populated with things that fill you with warm feelings and good memories but you know and yeah people <laughs>